Welcome guys back to the channel. It's that time of year again where junky boats start popping up on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. And well, this wonderful gem has piqued my interest. Mostly, well, I'll show you the reasons why. For one, she's just beautiful. I think it's gonna clean up good. Uh, it's got a little four cylinder with an alpha. But moreover, I really like the style of this boat. It's a, a Raven 19.5. You got a sweet little cuddy cabin. It's clearly got some, some good headroom in there. Stainless steel grab rail around the, the front. And well, let's just give you a quick walk around tour and then we'll drag it home, see if we can't get her water worthy on a budget. And underneath the hull, it's pretty good shape. You know, not looking bad so far. Trailer's an 88, but it looks perfect. Like this boat's clearly not been in the salt water very much. You know, cracked window um, Je Jen actually sent me this boat and she says I, let's get this I want it she wants to do a video doing up the interior or something so I, I don't know I said you know I, I do like the style and we'll grab it uh, the price was right too got nice rollers on there I'm not a huge fan of roller trailers I'd rather have a bunk trailer because um, a lot of time these these put like stress on the hull and over time as these hulls get weaker they can start to push in but this one seems Seems like a nice haul. Uh, looks like we got a little crack down here. And it's wet, so that's going through. Not a big deal. Uh, the tires, dry rotted, holding air. I'll just jump around telling you what I see. The Raven, I wonder if that's factory. That seems like somebody might have just put it on there. Uh, so the story is on this one, he said it's been sitting for about six or so years, but uh, this guy's really cool, Frank. He, I'll, maybe I'll get to meet him here at some point. He's going to show me inside of the shop a little bit. But uh, he was working on this boat to restore it. And very, very unfortunate, had, had an unfortunate accident. He went to walk up this ladder going in and out. And then he went to step on this seat. And it went through just like that. And when he did, he went back and landed on the ground and, and broke his back. And he has never been able to... To work on any of this stuff ever since that a so really uh unfortunate kind of freak accident but makes it makes you realize you got to be careful you know it just takes one slip and fall and you could be laid up uh, but anyway going back to the boat the it's got a nice mer cruiser looks like a, a gen one and I, this is one of the things that turned me on to this boat is look at these stickers i mean this thing's never been in the salt water stainless steel lines don't have any fraying or rust on them no uh, grinding noise and the, the bearings down here. Sometimes when they sit with water in them, the, the bearings will get all rusted or you might want to look also for cracks. Sometimes these the water will get in there and it'll freeze and crack. And it does look like this has had a repair done at some point, but they did a nice job on it. The bellows don't appear to be torn. Uh, the back of this boat, you know, I don't know, so far I've not seen any major rot. It's got the, the hull identification number on it. The, uh, the trim tabs. Here's Frank over here. Okay. If you want to ask any information on it. Uh, no, no, I'm good with it. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'll take it just as it is, man. All right. Let's hop up in this uh, the swim platform. Actually, on there pretty good. I feel like we could. Oh, yeah. Let's not take a slip and fall though. You know, we do the. I don't know, that one's actually sturdy, but. So it's full of a few leaves, but it's got a carpet, and so far, not feeling any soft spots. Now, we all know the wood in this boat is probably very waterlogged and rotted, but as you guys have seen in previous videos, that uh, doesn't matter too much. You don't really need the wood in a boat. You cut it all out and take it on the water. He's got the little 3.0 inline four, which is another thing I loved about this boat. I mean, for the size you're getting, and then you got this little four banger, you're gonna save so much fuel. I bet you this will do 32, 34 mile an hour. Looking pretty clean. Um, I already bought the boat, so I guess it doesn't really matter if the engine's locked up or not. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, that's not good. All that water going down in here, but uh, only a little bit of corrosion. Oh, who knows? Water could be full of water. We'll, we'll tear into that later. Let's just finish this uh, quick interior tour. This is gonna end up 
having a lot of trash that comes out of it. Um, plexiglass, glass, and plexiglass on the side. Shifter, operational. It's got a key. Maybe you need a little PB blast in there. You look at the gauges. It's amazing these older gauges don't get water in them and some of the newer stuff like my uh, the Sea Ray 215 I had, those were got a bunch of water. Steering cable works. What we got here? Oh, comes with life vests, some rotted wood. Now, Jen is going to be the one in charge of the interior. I told her that I'll clean it out and get the, the rodents, uh, free, make it free of rodents, but she is the one that is going to make something happen in here. A moss girl. How about the seat? Oh, look at how rigid that is. The floor is barely moving. This is a nice boat. We're gonna we're gonna make it waterworthy. Let's get her hooked up and head on out. Frank said he's got a swim platform or something for it too, possibly if I want to grab it. Is that what you think for? It? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll take this. Right. It's teak too. Yeah, we could probably make this work. Nice. Check out these old uh, playground pieces these are awesome imagine this is probably why they don't have these anymore because you do that like we used to as a kid that'll it'll knock a kid out if you hit him in the face that could kill you look at that that would bust someone's skull right open i was making it into a a campground nice. back here my private campground i even got the sign there that i never put it on the ground and it got a concrete, uh, a poor concrete base on it. Very cool. And, and you said you were a Vietnam vet, right? Well? Yes, yes. What, uh, uh, six, oh, you were in the fourth six, inch? Six, seven, sixty-eight. Very I cool. Well, thank you for your service, man. Everything could be level. For lights, we got one side marker and one turn signal brake. No markers. I'm gonna pump these tires up a little bit more. These were sitting flat over in the yard where it was parked. Hoping these make the uh, hour drive home, we'll see. Okay, nice sunny afternoon. I think the first step is going to be give her a quick spit shine to boost the morale on this project, if you want to call it that. Clean out the interior, hit the outside. Let's do it. I'm just going through first, kind of getting everything that could be reused to start fluid. Prop that's a little banged up, but got some nut and container there. Some water remover for ethanol gasoline to help uh, absorb the water out. Mix. Uh, surprisingly, oh. let's get stabbed in the back with this. It surprisingly doesn't stink in here at all. Like, I mean, of course it's sitting open, but uh, doesn't it smell moldy or musty. <laughs> the walls are uh, you know, pretty good still. <laughs> we got our fire extinguisher. Still good for use because the green pops. That's all they check when they, they board you. I'll check dates are nothing on them from my experience. Uh, tow ropes. Oh, just saw a big insect. What was that? Ooh, some spiders. Jen's gonna like that. We got a couple all around lights and spare bulbs for them. Brand new whistle. There it goes. Oh, flares. A flare gun. Kind of sweet. Can't argue with that. And a nice waterproof case too. Marine signal kit. And all in all, we ended up with three anchors, all our dock lines, a throwable, got a couple vests, and fenders, three of them. I, basically everything the boat, which is always awesome when uh, you get that included with a boat. If we got to this another month later or so, would have been lots of bees all up in it. All 
already starting to feel better in here. We gotta get these floors opened up so they can dry out. Get the, the drains cleared. That way when it rains, it doesn't just, just stay full of water. Um, these guys, I'm gonna use OSB on the back so that you know, these seats rotted right apart, but we'll keep the cushions maybe Jenna wanna do something with them. This stuff doesn't last outdoors very much. Uh, but you know, it look good for a while probably. How about under the fold down? Maybe you got some goodies. Yeah, there's some stuff. But this, uh, this is actually still in pretty decent shape. And what do we got here? Another fire extinguisher. It's green. Spare belt, some zip ties, electrical tape, a bilge plug or butt plug I like to call it. Sometimes people get upset. And uh, these stainless steel clamps, look at that. And a speck of rust on them. Ideal. Made in USA. Well, that's not good. This front mount completely rotted, I can see. Not a hard fix, though, and it looks like it'll hold up for now. It's got everybody's favorite, the Fram filter on there. Let's see if the oil's way ever filled which would not be good. Oh, yep, yeah, we are about five inches over or so, which means the bottom is probably full of water. So any guesses uh, if this motor's locked up? I'm gonna say, yeah, I think, it, I think it will be, but we'll see. I don't like this rust line on the cover either. That's making me think like the motor's full up to here with oil and water and that, that slight line. That these old GM 3.0s are tough as nails. I'm confident we'll get it running either way. Let's finish up cleaning. Check out the pedestal for the, the seat. It's super heavy duty. Somebody welded this giant plate of aluminum to the base of it. That's a nice job. And over on the engine, something I noticed, not a good sign. We see water streaks down here. A lot of time that means the, the block is cracked. Uh, he said, Frank said that he had stored this with uh, no water and he said, yeah, I properly drained it and winterized it. So hopefully when I turn this, nothing comes out. Uh, see, what can happen though is sometimes uh, people loosen these, drain it halfway and then sediment will clog the whole important here and they think it's drained but it's not fully drained the water's coming out of there you always take a rod preferably copper and work it around you see that this block was never drained and so that means it probably is cracked on the side underneath the manifold where they all crack and the freeze plug or, or core plug is probably out on the back of the engine like uh, like the trash liner same deal maybe we got lucky because not all that much water came out Maybe it was partially drained. We'll see later. For now, let's keep doing the less important, but way more enjoyable stuff, cleaning. I'll start by hitting it with the light duty electric pressure washer since it's so darn convenient. Kinda love how you can just walk right out, pulling it, and it's just so simple. Here, Gus in there making a fuss. He doesn't like it very much. Let's see what he thinks it about before we clean it out fully. Let him do his sniff check. Oh, you don't like it in here, huh? Come on, it's gonna be your new hangout spot out of the sun. Yeah, run that nose around. Let us know what you find. Who's that? That's you in the mirror. This kind of cabin window. Plastic, but it's uh, reinforced. The tempered glass ones are real nice. Oh. It really needs the high pressure to be able to blow all that chunky stuff off. Oh.
This is definitely going to need a scrubbing though, but we'll give it the preliminary. came out awesome love to see you know what a buff would do to this thing i mean look at the look at the outdrive stunning i think i'm tagging the inside a little bit Is this cat doing out here on the boat? He likes it more than Gus. Hey there, sir. Are you investigating? <laughs> oh, you didn't have to leave. <laughs> and now for the exciting part. Find out the condition of this engine. Put your comments down below. What do you think at this time, Mark? Locked up or not? I'm going with locked up and water in the crankcase. Maybe, probably not in the cylinders, but water in the crankcase. We find out though. It's got some AC Delcos in it that look in good shape. These are uh, marine plugs. They're not all rusted, like the standard ones. The electrode, completely gone. Yeah, it's like burned up. So that's cylinder number one. No rust though, which is nice. Number two, no rust. Number three, no rust. And number four, same deal. So just that number one, the electrode dropped out of it. We'll hope it didn't run lean and mess up the piston or something. Uh, after seeing those plugs, I'm gonna go with maybe this engine is not locked up. Let's find that out now. We'll shoot a little lube down here first. Yeah, we'll just go with a little PB blast, the Pro Stroll. Shoot her down each one. It's convenient. Little lube will do you good. Seven eighths on the alternator because there's no crank bolt on these. Let's see if we get lucky. Oh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Engine rotates fine. I just hear a bunch of noise, but that's, that's the rust on the belt. So now let's pull out what's in the crankcase before we go cranking this over with the starter. I don't want to suck that up the uh, oil pickup, you know. I think there's going to be water. Because like I was showing you before, well, actually, no, we're only a half inch over on the dipstick. Before I saw it was all the way up to here. That's a good sign. To pull off the bottom, we can pull out of this dipstick. Now you, you do have a drain plug on these pans but on marine engines you always find the ght garden hose thread on the dipstick tube uh, actually no this has a replacement drain plug with a hose attached to it and a little plug so we can dump this out the bilge and actually drain off the back that's pretty sweet very cool that somebody added that i mean really the only downside i can see to this is if the, the hose ever failed for whatever reason got soft or something and you end up with a massive oil leak not knowing when you're cruising down the river. Oh, that was barely tight at all. It's like hand threaded on. Now let's cross our fingers, just oil comes out would be nice. 
here we go because you know the water is heavier than oil and it will just sit on the bottom yep just oil so far let that go for a little bit because it's overfilled anyway though not very ideal unless you're changing hot oil or there's a blockage maybe let's do the wrong thing and push the blockage back into the pan there it goes all right i think it's probably just thick oil yeah that, that flowed right back i heard it bubbling in the pan of course now now it's aerated for me blowing in there but anyway good stuff no water on the bottom of the pan so we'll put this back in and get some power to the starter no spark it's good no short circuit or anything Let's see if we get lucky here nothing Oh, there's the pump. Bilge pump works. Sounds good. Let's put the plugs in and listen to compression. For the one that's missing the electrode, might as well grab a used plug now. Actually, one of these rusty auto lights. Uh, by the way, huge shout out to the guy who sent me, if you're watching, uh, he sent me this Caterpillar plug kit. Look at this. So I actually added these these plugs to it, but it came with all blue plugs, made in USA, and this is awesome because uh, normally you know, I got my cap screw, and usually I have something to, to work in, in this guy or, or this one, big plug. But lately I've been like, man, I need just a, a better array of, of plugs, wider selection, and uh, boom, these test plugs, these are really going to come in handy. So. Now I feel like I need to change up my organization a little bit because this is pretty sweet. You know, maybe I'll keep this in the, the truck when we're out on the job somewhere. So seriously, thank you so much for sending this. That's uh, Alliance Plastic Company, Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I don't really talk much about it, but I do have the P.O. box listed in the About section on the, my YouTube channel page. And you know, if any of you guys ever want some stickers uh, and you send a pre-addressed uh, stamped envelope with postage on it to that p.o box it might take me a little bit because i don't check it like every day or anything probably every week or two at most uh, but i will send you you know a few stickers whatever whatever uh, up to five i'd say just let me know how many you, you want yep all right well let's uh let's hear that crank now that's that's a good crank we got excellent compression Next thing I want to check is the stern drive. See if there's any water at the bottom of, uh, of that before we go cranking this a bunch more. Kind of same deal, you know, if there's, oh, didn't even need the hand impact. Uh, if there's water down here, we don't want that mixing up. We want to drain it off the bottom first. So here we go. Oh, milky, milky oil. It's got a magnetic drain plug. Nothing crazy on there. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's just a little bit of milk on the bottom. So that's that's fine. And then I see blue, bluish gear oil, which means he was using marine gear oil. Next thing's going to be fuel and spark. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but the fuel inlet is off the tank, which is good because anytime you crank an engine over, it's been sitting for a long time. We don't know what's inside this fuel tank. It could be a lot of water sitting on the bottom. That's pretty common with boats. That leads over to the fuel pump. It's got a little uh, little guy we could take off the bottom and check it, and then it leads up this guy, inline filter to the carburetor, and this well, this looks like I guess either a vent or maybe uh, like in case the diaphragm ever fails or something, this comes up and it just leads into the top of the carb. And we do have points ignition, of course, so we'll. I just want to clean those off. But all that is tomorrow because i uh, got some other plans tonight. So I'm very thrilled to see that it's cranking over with good compression. This is going to be a good runner for sure. The sun is shining. Let's get this motor fired up. I was poking around with the power probe and determined that our uh, ignition switch is bad. I might actually have a switch up in my switches box for lucky. Yeah, look at that. Made in USA too. This is actually like a new old stock one, but you know, it's gonna be better quality than the junk you buy in the store. Now, orange is power coming in. 
Purple is ignition, power to the ignition coil. And then yellow is your start wire. It goes over to the starter solenoid. Gauges budge, internal accessory. Oh yeah, very nice. Give her a little crank, see if we get lucky, have spark without messing with the points. Nah, no spark. Take the cap off, clean the points up. Cap looks excellent inside. Super rusty screws on the top, but points don't look bad either. Yeah, a little corrosion in between. I'll blip that over till we're on the peak of the cam, widest opening. That's it there. I got a card about 20,000 thick. And yeah, that's gonna be good enough right there. Put this back together. And before I crank it again, let's see if we can get the trim. Oh, geez. Just leaned on this. Yeah, so a little rod behind there. I was gonna say, let's see if we get the trim down because it's not a good idea to crank these engines over and, and definitely don't start them when the trim's all the way up because the U-joint's on a real steep angle on that shaft. Also, we should get some water flowing uh, here in case it starts. That way we don't burn up the impeller pump. So with the key on or off, none of the switches up here work. Of course, that might not be getting power due to the weird wiring. In fact, it's probably not. So here's the, the trim pump in the back. Let's see what the oil looks like. Uh, very milky, but it's up to level, so that's cool. You got this main power coming from the battery, and yep, we have power on that. And then the ground is coming over from the battery onto here, the stainless bolt. Um, I'm not getting a good ground at these solenoids. A little something there. Yeah, well, I see that comes over here where they had a dual battery set up, and which I, I knew that because there you got this positive I've been using. But uh, yeah, that ground's got to go to the block. I'll just stack around with the rest of these grounds. Now we got a good ground on the solenoid. Let's try power again. Still, still nothing though. I mean, I'm not getting any click or nothing out of it. How about the bottom solenoid? There it goes, that one works. Not doing anything though. Oh, yep. And for now, we'll just manually go up and down. Let's see. That's up, so the bottom one is down. Yeah! Pump sounds a little rough. We got the water going. Give her a quick shot of some starting fluid. I think, I think we're gonna have spark, and it'll start up. Easiest way to check for spark, right? Is it gonna start? It might, it should. Am I gonna get wet? No. There it is. Yeah, she's a runner. That was nice and healthy. So, uh, yeah, I just gotta get some gas going to the carb now and find out. Might have to pop this off and clean it too, but. You got the carb hooked up to some auxiliary and the float is working properly, sealed off. Uh, I'd like to hook this back up to the tank so we can run the uh, fuel line off of that into something. See, see if anything comes out of the tank or if the pump works. Yeah, okay, there it is. So we just got to fish it around the backside. Got her running arm over into this jug. Let's fire it up. Hopefully no water leaks, right? For now, 
might just be a blockage in the hose or something. Water comes up in this tube. And of course we got two water pumps. One is in the stern drive and that shoots water up from the river up this hose. I'm gonna start this, see if we have any flow. And then the second is to circulate throughout the engine water pump built into it. I have a feeling this has got a blockage or we have a bad pump on the stern drive. Yeah, I hear it going back there. Some, sometimes the gimbal housing will get corrosion in there and seal it shut or restrict it a lot. But that's, you see that more with like salt water. And I don't think this boat's been in the salt water. Uh, this should be slow and we got a bad pump. We got a new impeller kit on order from Amazon, 26 bucks. Those should always be replaced regardless when a, when a boat sits this long. And by the way, no gas came out of the tank. So hopefully it's just empty, you know, because uh, I did feel the pump kind of chugging back and forth. We'll throw some gas in there when we start it back up. But let's pull this thermostat housing, see what that looks like. Well, there is no thermostat. Okay, we'll get that thermostat on order too. And let's find out what's up with this fuel situation. <laughs> By blowing this, oh, it's just straight blocked. Take it back off of the tank. Which, yeah, this it doesn't feel empty, but there ain't much in there because I can lift the tank up, which is good. Less fuel to get rid of. So this pickup is somehow blocked. different style than I've seen before. I like it though. Nice and simple. Yeah, that tank's like bone dry. Minus a little bit of water on the bottom. Doesn't even stink like fuel or nothing. Screen's not blocked, but no flow. And uh, well, that wouldn't have been reading accurate fuel either. Yep. No gas smell at all. Just need to soak up a little bit of uh, water on the end of it. And good to go. Look at that, came out real nice. And now, well, you can see it, but uh, clean it off for me. Let's check the fuel separator, or the water separator on the bottom of the fuel pump. It actually doesn't look too bad. I guess that's just a little filter and spring and uh, some rust. So I'll clean that crud out. Uh, at this point, I guess let's talk about our biggest issue, and that is this front motor mount. Uh, that's gonna need some, some fiberglass work. You can tell, it looks like somebody already came in here and did some repairing, like this wall. This is nice and sturdy. You might even just have a new floor. I think somebody did this three quarter inch. But when that's sunken down, you, know, you could take it out and it would be fine for a little bit, honestly, based on my experience. But you can see it's already tearing up this front motor mount. And what else it's gonna do is wear out the gimbal bearing. Uh, put, it's putting a lot of pressure it can actually hurt the bearings inside the stern drive too because that shaft's coming into the back of the engine and it's it's kind of you know, so obviously not going to be at the right angle with that sunk down so that's that's a big on the priority list too let's pop this off see what the impeller looks like first step is draining the gear oil that's what came out about a quart i think these take more around two quarts uh, but it's okay the gaskets are in good shape on them no need to replace Gotta say, that's one thing the OMC drives got on these, or the Volvo Pentas. The water pump's a lot easier to get to. Not that these are hard or anything, but... Yeah, it's pretty shot. The housing's fairly scored up, and then the impeller, uh, yep, yeah, it's completely worn out and cracked. Even if this flowed enough to take us out on the water, it wouldn't have lasted very long. Man, that's really on there. Uh, 
There it goes. Okay. That, uh, it's really on there. This does have a key. I don't want to lose that. And then the bottom stainless plate with gasket. I think the new kit comes with all this stuff, though. You can see somebody used to have a hydrofoil or whale tail bolted on here. It's got the uh, hole drilled for it. Let's see what's going on with this fuel pickup. The uh, clamps are just rusted away. Hopefully, blockage in the bottom of this. Nope. Oh, it's got a, a check valve in there. So on this, I'll replace these rusted clamps and uh, well, this one actually feels okay. But if that breaks off, then you know, you're gonna be running out of gas at a half tank. Like no. Got a little bit of an ant uh, problem here. Look at them, wow. There's thousands of them. Yeah, there's not even anything there. I don't, I don't know what they're attacking. Can you imagine waking up in a tent with that on your body? Yeah, that'd be fun. Hey, at least they aren't red ants. They they are. The tank all squared away, filled up with five gallons of freshie. I hope it doesn't leak anywhere. Vents working good. Got a few parts in. You know, trailer like kit, oil filter, here's that water pump kit, $26. You get the, all the gaskets, new housing, and here's a look at the new impeller versus the old. With some trim solenoids, spark plug, thermostat, and a fuel filter. I got this impeller slopped up with some marine silicone grease to help put it in, but uh, I'm noticing it's, I don't know if this is an aftermarket shaft or something, but it is really tight getting on there. So that's just, I mean, I didn't even hit the key yet. And it's, so I'm, I think I'm gonna hammer this on first somehow, and then, then we'll slide this over, put the housing on. There it goes. I see what the problem was. There's just a little lip on the top. Probably should have sanded that off, but it'll be all right. Now we just gotta slide this into place. As I push this on, I'll go kind of counterclockwise because you generally want to rotate the blades the same way they came out. However, it really doesn't matter. If you push them the other way, as soon as this thing spins, they're gonna all rearrange themselves. It'll be fine. These impellers are pretty tough when they're new. Yep, just like that. Oh, <laughs> it grease did me wrong there. I was just making sure we're gonna get this tab lined up on the cover. Okay, now let's get this on. Yep, tabs in the back. There it is. All together, splines greased up. This is the most important seal right here because that joins the gear oil between the upper and lower cases. And we've also got it in gear so we can spin this, line those splines up top when we're sliding it on. Well, that's 
put that bottle in there. Tin foil label. No tin foil on this one. Hot gear oil flows so much better. Should probably get a garage microwave, but and you always fill these units from the bottom up so that way uh, you don't get any air bubbles trapped or anything. Just I remember filling one uh, from the top down and it took forever. And I was like, man, there's got to be a better way. I didn't realize they sold these little pumps. You know, fill it from the bottom up. Makes a lot more sense. Oh yeah, that's flowing good. Should probably just get an electric pump would be nice actually. And there it is. It only took half this bottle, which is exactly how much it was in there before. The fuel filter I got comes with a stainless spring and it's a filament style. The, the other one was like a stone in there. I can tell there's corrosion down on the housing though because all that powder coming off on that the old uh, overing. I saw a ton of it. So we'll clean that up and grease it. And then just wipe some Bell Red grease on the new O-ring. That'll slow down the corrosion. And keep this stuck in place. Swap these four new plugs in. Not that there's anything wrong with the old ones, but nice to have a matching set. And I'll just keep the three of these for spares. this frame filter and drop the wicks on made in USA like I said oil is fine for now we'll see how she does on the first water trial before we go changing oil for the thermostat old gasket was in pretty good shape so I just put a light coating of silicone on there instead of dealing with scraping it keep that for the future Drop that thermostat in and bolt the housing up. I got the water flowing. Let's start this up and check for flow. Looking for gas flow too. Make sure that pump works. Good. No need for a pre-filter since we know that's nice and clean down there. It's like, it sounds like one cylinder. What's going on? That's a few. It's hard to tell with this whole this four cylinder. This is the kind of water flow you're looking for out the exhaust and on the side here. Yeah, that's good. Much better. That pump was completely shot before. Be all nice and muddy coming out of the engine. Heck yeah. We got good oil pressure. Temperature's coming up, no charging voltage, if that's accurate. I'm not sure, yep, that looks accurate. Not charging. Got a dab of silicone on that belt, and that quieted down for now. See, we have no more adjustment. Definitely hitting all four, sounding great. Shutter down. I want to show you the, the flow difference on this hose too. We'll dump it into this bucket and even with the hose going you see nothing's coming through there. Yeah, check that out. That's the kind of flow you're looking for. Nice pressure. Of course you got the garden hose behind it too, but yeah, that's, that's a healthy pump. Oh yeah. Let's see if the safety switches on this work. Put it in reverse. Nothing, that's good. Forward, okay. So I'll also bring it back to neutral. There it goes. How about the throttle only? You push this button in, and then we can go throttle only instead of going into gear. For easier starting. How about into gear? There's forward. Reverse, still idling higher than I'd like it to be. Oh 
I'll take this over, get a shorter belt. Whoo, that one's hot from squeaking. I gotta say, it's one of the annoying things about these engines is you have to take this bracket off to get the belt off. It's like, so dumb. But it is what it is. Water pump sounds good, nice and healthy. I don't know if you guys heard it, but when I was bringing the RPM up, running it, there's like a slight knock noise. Hopefully it's just valve train or something, but it doesn't sound great. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and spill the oil while it's hot. We'll get some, some fresh in there and uh, maybe maybe run some Marvel Mystery too. You can see this hose works much better uh, when it's actually, when that hot oil starts coming through. Oh yeah. Got some fresh tires for this trailer. Taking the high road because it's just not worth the risk when you have giant gaping cracks in the sidewall. Yeah, these are. For the people that say you don't have to balance trailer wheels, you're right, you don't. But if you got a balancer there, why not? Good bearings. A little bit. It's got some reliable shore lubes on it. Never seen those before. Okay. Oh, hey, boo. At this point in the video, I'm gonna take a little break from the boat, head back to earlier this week over at Frank's place, which is where we got the Raven 195. Uh, so if you wanna check that footage out, it's about to start, but there will be a follow-up video on this boat for sure. We're gonna get it on the water. We're going full tilt, not gonna give up. We gotta fix that motor mount and, and just basically take it out and see what Jen does with the interior. We'll rewind to earlier in the week now, and thanks guys so much for tuning in this far if you have. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a quick tour through this building that uh, Frank put up himself at the undisclosed location. This place is gonna be for sale, but he wanted me to show this place. So he built this as a, an in-law suite uh, for his, his mother-in-law, a gas fireplace. Uh, wait, wait till you see the rest of this building. It's kind of interesting actually, but he did this, a sweet kitchen setup. And then as you move for further, there's all sorts of secret rooms I'm gonna show you too, but uh, he's got a bathroom here and then you got the Sliding door into a heater utility room. And wait till you see, it just keeps going. This is gonna be your, your laundry and such. Uh, he was gonna put windows in here because his mother-in-law said, I want windows. I wanna be able to, to look out from, from the place. Uh, sorry about the, the low lighting. I don't have, have a good light with me, but this is the garage where you can park a car, quad, whatever. And then we go upstairs. Check this out, he did all this work. Uh, himself which is you know it's pretty cool now he used he didn't use a drywall on this because he wanted the extra strength of using uh, osb and here's the windows he put in for his mother-in-law she said i don't want that i want to be able to look outside <laughs> it's uh, funny when he's telling me this whole story but keeps going now this uh <laughs> it's got some secrets in it it's just a storage room however behind here there's a full shower all you got to do is take these file cabinets out and then you can put your toilet in right here yeah it's all plumbed for it but for undisclosed reasons he had to uh, abandon that for now 
but everything for it is boarded up behind this secret wall. So you have all the, the toilet and other fixtures and such for the bathroom. And so you keep going over here. This is the second bedroom, which used to be two, had a closet. He had to take down the closet. And uh, yeah, let me, let's go downstairs. As we continue our way through this garage door, that brings you into the workshop. It's got a Mustang, Kubota torn down, just a ton of parts and tools and stuff all over the place. But we're gonna just keep on pushing back. This is the, the office, storage over there. This guy did it all. I mean, <laughs> now here's the, the wood shop. So if, if whoever buys this place, all this comes with it. So you get to, I mean, you get some, some nice tools and you get a lot of materials and things to work with. And we go through here. And this is the horse stable. So you had four stables and it's been converted ever since into more storage. But uh, yeah, he had, uh, he had a bunch of horses and then this goes out into the yard. Next day, taking a ride back down to Frank's in the old DeBalls Wrecker. It's been the longest trip ever in this, uh, over an hour. And you know, we're only doing 55 with the three speed, probably the biggest flaw with this truck. But I've got the BX23 that he has uh, broken down in parts. I got that sold for him. So the crane will come in handy for lifting that into the guy's trailer. Might be time to swap this Muncie SM465 out for a, uh, probably like a NV4500 or something would be nice. It's actually whistling quite a bit too. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Way easier than trying to push it all. That was great. Frank's BX23 is going off to a new owner. This, uh, he had hit a stump with this. And where's that transmission? It actually broke the transmission housing on it. The whole case. And here's the other side. I don't know if you can see it in there, but yeah, the whole case broke. He said he, he, uh, he said you hit a stump, Frank, and it went up and then the wheels came down and it just popped. The right wheel spun and when it came down, it busted that. And then I drove inside the garage and that's when I started working on it. Well, Frank said I can ride these, don't, you know. Don't, don't you get bucked off from me. <laughs> oh man, this thing is great. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I want to buy one of these off. <laughs> no, it oh, goes with the property. This is awesome. <laughs> that is the most fun I've had in a while. That is great. Those yeah, are like yeah, old yeah. truck springs or something, right? Yeah, that's uh, I got a steel beam, anchor real tight. Oh, that deal went pretty smooth. I was, when I got off the highway, I, I noticed this trail. I always like to hop on random trails and take them. This is, I believe, a state forest, so. Oh, I'll screw it down there, see where it goes. And give the suspension a little exercise on this rig. idea this is cool i'll have to look this up and see what the scoop is but i bet you there's some big bass in here not that i'm much a fisherman but you know that's why it's worth just popping on a quick trail here there as long as you just no signs find a sweet swimming hole uh, so about halfway home getting some weird noises some kind of bearing if you guys can hear that and it doesn't sound good though oh it's not it sounds like something in the transmission this guy's uh safety patrol I'm gonna hook this guy up right here
And that's it. Puts a final wrap on this video now. So thanks very much for tuning in. Huge shout out and thank you to you guys that went ahead and ordered the, the new hats that we got on the no nonsense knowhow.com. Link to it down below if you want to check them out. But seriously, thank you very much. I think like 40 something hats sold. So, so thank you guys. Appreciate it. See you in another video very soon. There's going to be a follow up on this boat. Can't wait to get her out. All right. See you guys.